Welcome to the AWS Report. I'm Jeff Barr. My guest today is, is Billy Cox, Director of Software Strategy for Intel. Welcome. Glad to be here, Jeff. So let's start out by talking about the fact that both you and I have been in the technology business for a really long time, and we've seen a lot of things come and go. Is the cloud a fad, or do you think it's a fundamental change in the world? So, so this is a fundamental change in the way we do IT, but I, I don't like to get hung up on the term cloud, because to me that, that tends to drive you down, well, you have to do it the certain way. Well, what is exactly it? Well, no, 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 it's none of those. It's, it's an approach to the way we deliver services. It, it's a way to run IT that brings out agility, that focuses on the service that's being done, not the technology behind the scenes about how you go do it. And finally, for the first time, we can begin to automate things in a, in a real material way rather than go nibble around the edges and just make things more complicated. Great, so I, I totally agree on the automation part, and I often talk to people and say, if, if there's no APIs, then it's probably not a cloud. The APIs are a necessary part. The self-service part is a necessary element. The, you, you, you can't do scale unless you, you, you got, if you're going to have a cloud, you've got to have some level of scale. Otherwise, how do you amortize the resources? How do you do the balancing a part of it? So, you know, there are attributes that I see as necessary. And, and what's, what's interesting is as soon as you turn on that API, as soon as you have that self-service, as soon as you have the ability to reuse and be multi-tenant, you find all these other things that, that you can do with it. We, we, you know, there were, there were hardware manufacturers were terrified when virtualization came out because, oh my gosh, it's going to kill us, right? Nobody, people want less servers. What happened was we lowered the cost of compute by being able to share systems. Well, cloud through the APIs, through the sharing has done the same thing. It's lowered that cost of compute again. And what's happened? We see more demand for compute, not less. Of course. So when did Intel first start to realize the cloud was something important and to then pay attention to it? So I got attention internal to the company around the middle of 2008. Uh, prior to that, it was, uh, okay, this is interesting, but uh, Intel held an internal uh, strategy meeting uh, where the, the execs come and charge a group of people and say, here's a problem, go tell us uh, how we should go deal with a challenge or an industry transition. Uh, and so the company does a very formal look at it at that point, and it's very hard to edge. It's really, you know, challenge every little assumption that's possible. And, and we walked out of there thinking, yep, yeah, this is an opportunity, not a threat. This is actually a huge opportunity. Uh, and it took a little while to say, what do we go do? Uh, that, that's always the case when you have these major transitions, but Intel has been very passionate really since you know, 2008. Okay, now once you got that figured out, did, did you then say, well, what can we engineer and kind of go from the bottom up or more talk to customers and go from customer needs back to new features? Yeah, so we hear that. So it's interesting, cloud happened and the hardware that we have available had been in flight for five years. So the ability to influence the silicon, well, that time was way past. So to the first approximation, what I had to do was say, what problems are we trying to solve in the market? What have I got on the truck that I can use, and how can I use those to now go solve those problems? And it turned out there was a lot more there than I expected there to be there. Things around security and performance efficiency and power management, there was actually a fairly good set of things to go do. So in, in this case, it was, what have I got that I can use? We also see the case where the industry can say, I care a lot about privacy. I care a lot about security. I, performance efficiency matters. What are the, that's not specific enough to change silicon, but we can go back to the designers and say, hey, here's what we want. We can also go to the designers and say, here are some workloads we find in the cloud today, Memcache, Hadoop, LAMP stacks, and say, Let, let's get some detailed traces, as Intel calls them, and then the chip designers can use those and they can measure potential architecture changes with those specific traces and say, does it help or not? And so suddenly we went from no influence of the cloud on to the hardware to actually a fairly substantial influence on it. And we see things like the Open Compute Project that Facebook and Intel and others participate in to design new kinds of platforms as being one step in that evolution of, we used to be traditional enterprise designs, now we're focused on highly optimized designs, and we will see highly optimized silicon as we go down the road. Okay, you mentioned a little bit about security before, so what kinds of things have you learned to date that get engineered into CPUs for, that can help out the cloud? So starting with the uh, <coughs> two generations back, we have a set of low-level technology, we call it TXT, Trusted Execution Technology, and, and it was fundamentally designed as a way to uh, make, make a provable environment for the, for the hypervisor. So when you boot the hypervisor, you know what it is. And, and when I came into the project from the perspective of cloud, I said, oh, uh, you know, so what, prob what user problem are we solving? You know, and it's a lot of discussion, and it turns out, I argue the problem we're solving is audit and compliance. 
if I'm a company and I want to use an asset and I'm doing PCI credit card transactions and I have to provide an audit report that says I'm doing exactly my process to, to implement it, <clears throat> one of the things I need is to say that I, I told you I would run my virtualization with a certain version and patches, I can prove it to you. Now how about encryption and things like that? Is that also something you might put special features in? We already do actually, I'm sure you've seen them Jeff, we have something called AASNI, it's an encryption, in, uh, a set of instructions to accelerate the standard encryption that we have today. As a matter of fact, on a, on a modern Intel processor, uh, writing data to disk encrypted takes less time than it did two generations ago to write it to the disk unencrypted. So one, one somewhat uh, different style question, but with all these cool technologies out there, how do you personally engage and keep up and make sure that you are studying and using the right kinds of things to make sure you're, you're ready for the future? Well, tracking blogs is by far the most you know, economical use of time these days. Uh, but I, I get to cheat a little bit as, as working with Intel. I get to see a little bit of what's coming down the pipeline. And, and then I do a lot of work directly hands-on with customers. Uh, into, you know, what, what are their issues or concerns? And the Open Data Center Alliance is an important source of, of guidance, not just because of what they publish as an org, but also the fact that there are key customers there. I'm also blessed that we have Intel IT. You know, I've worked for a number of high-tech companies, and most everywhere I've worked, the IT teams won't tell anybody what they're doing. The Intel IT is the antithesis. They tell everybody everything they're doing. Uh, and so we have a, a group that's actually implemented an internal uh, open source private cloud. And so I can go directly work with that team as well and find out what they need. And so, you, you know, you can read in a blog that, uh, you know, pri private clouds are, are, are emerging, but they're hard for customers to do. And then you go work with an IT team that's actually doing it. And you say, yeah, it's really hard. <laughs> and you can begin to get a much more hands-on Get that feel. real hands-on experience. Yeah. Definitely. So I know that Intel is a sponsor of our reInvent conference. We greatly appreciate that. And any particular words of advice you have for the um, reInvent attendees? Thrilled to see Intel participate. I, you know, we're in the. I, we tend to think that we've been doing cloud for a while, but I look at this as a you know ten or twenty year journey. And we're in now. We're now in day two or three. Right? We have no idea where this is going. So participating with Amazon in my book is participating with one of the industry leaders, and, and it's really a great opportunity to get out in front of the world and, and show the world what we can do. That's great to hear. I really appreciate your taking the time to come by and speak with us today. Thanks so much. My pleasure, Jeff. Thanks for having me. This has been the AWS Report, and I'm Jeff Barr.